Hey folks, Phil Gallagher here for Daily DNT. Um, I've missed a couple of streams recently, um, so we're going to say that this week of Daily DNT is brought to you by my good friends over at Cardboard Live. I haven't been streaming quite as much, so I feel like I need to give them a shout out here. All right, so today's list is a 5-0 list from Nathan Lepetz, which looked pretty interesting. So there's a lot of differences from a normal stock build. Um, primarily, we have a Charming Prince Militia Bugler package so that we can keep drawing cards, as well as Mentor of the Meek to go and help us draw even more cards. Um, so essentially, this deck list is looking to be able to go along and grind with the best of them. To make the Militia Buglers a little bit better, we have an Ancient Tomb to go with them to make them into a turn to play. Um, the sideboard is relatively stocked. There's a couple of choices that I don't necessarily like, but we're going to play the 75 as is. Uh, for example, I think that Fairy, relatively speaking, just ends up being worse than Surgical Extraction most of the time. But I can really understand wanting to play it if you're playing Militia Bugler. But, you know, you get to the point where you're like, the best thing you can be doing in a turn is casting, mili casting Militia Bugler. You probably got the game locked up anyway. Um... I've tried a couple of the all-in Charming Prince builds. I don't really think they're where you're supposed to be, but this was an interesting enough take on it, um, and Nathan seemed pretty excited about the deck list, so I wanted to go and give it a spin this week. I've been kind of medium on D&D recently, so I don't mind playing something a little bit wacky in the, uh, the leagues until... Uh, we perhaps get some adjustments to the format. I won't necessarily say that Legacy is in a bad place. I don't know that I'd quite go that far. But a lot of the games are really uninteresting, and there's a lot of deck building constraints. Delver's probably too good. I mean, it's always very, very good, if not the best deck, but the, the margins it has on most of the rest of the format are pretty big right now. I am pro kicking running right six out of the format at this point. Not necessarily for power level, but for the warping that it has done to the format. Uh, we have an absolutely amazing opening hand. Uh, can't ask for too much more here. Like, we get turn one vial into turn two Thalia, and we have a lot of different angles of attack. Losing the Vile here hurts a little bit, but if we're playing against some fair black deck, we have plenty of tools to take over this game. We'll see if it's just going to be something like Pox, in which case things could get weird. If it's Pox, these sorts of cards are going to be pretty good, not Pox. I mean, unless it's Pox with Fetch Lands, but, you know, be going pretty deep. Not 100% sure what we're playing against at this point. Could be something like Blue Black Reanimator, it could be something like Grixis Control, could be something like Death Shadow, it's still a little hard to tell. Or maybe like a straight up blue black control list, actually. So, interestingly, you create a 0 0 germ token. So, I guess that'll make Mentor of the Meek trigger. That's kind of hilarious. Alright, so we're playing against some sort of bug control deck. 
Uh, presumably, we're going to have things like uh, Tarmogoyf, Gurmag, Angler, Drown in the Lock, Assassin's Trophy, Abrupt Decay, maybe uh, Leovold, a couple of assorted Planeswalkers. I think Abrupt Decay is a very, very good card in the format right now. So really not surprised to see more of these sorts of decks popping up. Drown in the Lock is definitely a card that's better than it looks. Oh, okay, so we are, we are playing against like a Strifopile deck. Um, do I just want to wasteland that grove on sight before my opponent has a chance to punishing fire anything, or do I just want to draw a card? I'd, I'd really prefer to get to five mana. Yo man, loves your streams. You'll be on daily DNT tomorrow. I tapped this wrong. I, I wanted to leave Wasteland up to leave myself with the flexibility of Wastelanding or Casting Vial if this didn't resolve. But now we'll just go for our fifth land. I don't mind if we just get Punishing Fired once. And that's slightly annoying, but not the biggest deal right now. The Tarmogoyf kind of has to stay back defensively right now. We have a heck of a draw engine. We get slightly punished for not wastelanding, but I don't in any capacity at all regret it. Alright, so the Snapcaster Inquisition will take my Sword of Fire and Ice. We can still batter Skull. This game is going to get really interesting. It's sort of a shame that we don't actually get to draw cards here, because that would have been so cool. No. No. So something like a Swords to Plowshares would be great. Just like, get this Tarmogoyf out of the way. Pressure the Ren and Six, and then take over the game. I don't mind my opponent drawing one for one removal. I do, however, mind my opponent drawing Punishing Fire. That will that will be bad, because we'll like lose a mentor, they'll return it, I'll lose a mentor, and then their top decks will probably be of greater overall quality than my top decks. Opponent says, do you think that will be good for me, lol? Well, I don't know. Uh, that's awkward. It's very awkward. So I still control the germ, but they control the batter skull. So that means that they can bounce the batter skull and get rid of my germ at any point. They can also pay five mana to go and equip that to something else. Uh, so life has officially gotten weird.
So I think I'm supposed to cast the Thalia as my starting point. It's it's not going to be the most mana, mana efficient way to play this turn. But I think I need to play this turn in a way that gives me the greatest flexibility. Okay, that's very good. That is in fact probably good enough that I'm going to pass on the second draw in order to put that into play this turn. Alright. So now we now we shut off Punishing Fire. And again, you know, we, we're passing on some draws here, but shutting off Punishing Fire, Decay, Drown in the Lock, and a lot of cards of this nature, it's pretty strong. I could attack everything at Dak Faden and kill Dak Faden. Don't think it's correct to lose these mentors, though. This game's going to go very, very, very long. And I, right now, I'm just kind of hoping that my opponent doesn't draw something like Lightning Bolt or Fatal Push that can take this off of the table. Because as long as this sits here, I really like my chances. Yeah, all right, so there's there's the equip, creating a giant, giant, giant Tarmogoyf. This isn't actually a problem. I know this looks real bad from, like, the audience standpoint, but we already have this taken care of. We have Thalia, Caracas, Aethervile, and that combination along with Mentor of the Meek is just going to let us draw a billion cards. So we're going we're gonna to take nine to this this turn, and then not care too much about it after that. Yep, all right, so we see a land and a drown in the lock going down there. Not sure if my opponent is supposed to play out that land. It seems like just looting away anything with Dak Faden of that nature is probably better. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Okay. Um... So I can go Source of Plowshares this, attack in on Dak Faden with these three creatures, probably trade a Mentor for the Snapcaster Mage and Dak Faden. Or if my opponent doesn't attack, okay, yeah, all right. So let's, let's start here. Let's get that out of the way. Actually, I, I think I'm comfortable just attacking in with two on Dak Faden. Because then I can, then if my opponent doesn't trade, I can have Thalia back for blocking and bouncing. So the Thalia has been sitting on the board for a turn or two, right? So did my opponent miss the opportunity to ping and kill it with Brennan Six? One, two, 
one damage to a mentor of the meek. Uh, okay. You got fork bolt or something? Okay, I'm sufficiently confused. Was that just a misclick and that was supposed to go on Thalia? Yeah, I, I don't know what happened there. I guess I can leave six power in play, try to attack Renin six down to zero. It's a little unfortunate if they have Snapcaster Mage, and I do that though. Can I afford to leave this Sanctum Prelate back? All right, so let's let's start by casting the Tomic. That's pretty free. I think I'm going to go ahead and take it. Ooh, I do not think that is the correct play. I think you're supposed to target your drown in the lock, trade with Sanctum Prelate, and then post-combat kill my mentor. I'm going to be pretty tempted to just wasteland this Scalding turn and keep my opponent from shuffling and having to redraw one of the cards that they just put back. It's a little short-sighted given that my opponent is still at 32, though. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Oh, shoot. No, no, no. My opponent didn't make an error. I forgot about my Tomic. Oh, no, no. That's just land cards from the graveyard. Nope. All right. I don't, I don't know what was going on over there then. They, they had three mana available, four drown in the lock.
Alright, yeah, so you'll you'll punishing fire atomic. Do I have another prelate? That's something that's kind of important to know. I do. All right, my my opponent has just conceded this one. He said misclick. I wonder if that was in reference to like wrong Ren and Six ability because that definitely should have been like Ren and Six minus Kill Thalia there. All right. Um. So my opponent has a handful of Walker effects, so these might be good. I like the idea of rest in peace to just junk on their graveyard oriented value. Again, similarly, this will be pretty strong. Tomic seems great. Um, we're actually going to have a lot of cards that are going to be relatively good to bring in. So it's going to be more of a question of how many things do I have that I actually want to bring out. I'm going to junk most or all of my swords to plowshares. My opponent does have Tarmogoyce though, and I am going to need to respect those. But I think generally speaking, playing towards trying to grind with them in the end game is going to be okay with this deck list, given how much card advantage I have. Sorry, I'm kind of thinking to myself here. I'm thinking about Dak Faden, and I'm wondering if I can just like board out these seven cards, and then just kind of blank Dak Faden because all the all these things that I would be bringing here in here are really strong, and Dak Faden taking my Sword of Fire and Ice is super disastrous with this build, since like my, the Sword of Fire and Ice is going to kill almost all of my creatures. So I wonder if I can reasonably board something like this. It leaves me with 28 creature hits for the Buglers, which isn't bad. Sword of Fire and Ice, though, is really good until it loses me the game when my opponent steals it. It's kind of a weird setup. Note that I wouldn't normally board like this with traditional DNT. This is not traditional DNT, and I don't think I'm looking to win the endgame via equipment. I think I'm looking to win the endgame via drawing a whole bunch of cards. I have a medium hand. I have too much mana. But if I can keep my opponent off of Ren and Six, then having too much mana is probably okay. Will 100% snap off a Wasteland on that land, given my hand. And then next turn I will play double Aether Vial. I will probably play double Aether Vial, is a more accurate statement. It's slightly awkward now because if I want to port them on the following turn, it costs me two life to do so. That's pretty valuable. Uh, my opponent being on Underground C here means that they can't actually play Ren and Six this turn, which is quite nice. Alright, so this Tarmogoyf is not going to be a problem long term. 
I'm going to take two life to port down this underground sea. I 100% think that's worth it, because this will keep some of my goodies from being thought seized in this turn cycle. Um, that Tarmogoyf attack was safe unless I have double giver of runes. I probably would have made that attack. <laughs> Opponent in chat says afraid of double giver. I, I kind of regret doing that. I should have just waited until my opponent's turn. Because if they have exactly the card Lightning Bolt, I'm slightly punished for doing that. Um, I don't think I'm going to put this Revoker in now. I think putting a Vial on 2 and a Vial at 3, and just having the flexibility of putting the Revoker in in response to their first Planeswalker is worth not putting in both Mirror and Crusaders this turn. I can still port them off of black and keep them off of discard spells. We have a lot of options. And I do quite like having options. Just a brainstorm? Sure. I miss the days of like playing Spirit of the Labyrinth and getting people in response to brainstorm. But you just can't reasonably play X1 flex slots right now in this run and six world. More generally, Spirit of the Labyrinth is usually garbage because you're like playing against Tarmogoyf and then it dies and grows the Tarmogoyf by two and you're real sad. Um, yeah, that is, that is gonna suck. Alright, you got it. So if I want to get this Tarmogoyf off the table, I can trade Revoker and I can trade Revoker for Tarmogoyf. I can just revoke something random. Crusader will deal two to it, Revoker will deal two to it. That seems fine. Uh, so for right now, we're going to say always no to both of those. Let's 
So we're very, very scared of the world where my opponent gets Punishing Fire right now. Um, that's just super devastating for me. Son of a gun. Alright, looks like some number of Swords of Flashers are going to have to come back in for the next game. I didn't realize my opponent was going to have so many of those. My opponent doesn't know my deck list, which works to my advantage. Thank you, Charming Prince. Because if my opponent knew my deck list and knew how human heavy I was, they 100% would attack in there. Instead, they're just going to sit back until they can get a Planeswalker into play. Yikes. So like, what are my outs? Cataclysm to get rid of one. And then... Win with a Bugler, Crusader, Prelet. Uh, I think for the sake of time, I'm just gonna go ahead and scoop this one up. Like, there's worlds where I can get back in, but it, it's gonna be hard. So I need some of these back in. And what do I want out? My opponent has deed, do I just want a junk file? Pernicious deed is one of those cards that I will be willing to board the best card out card of my deck out against because like Pernicious Deed often represents something like a five or a six for one in the late game. So it would mean I would lose a lot of my best busted starts, but the average quality of my draw come the mid to late game will be higher. I don't know about this. Charming Prince loses utility if I do this. It doesn't become something that will just go and save my creatures. It becomes worse in that regard. Let's let's try it. This card is so insane against my opponent's deck, but not insane enough that I will keep six lands. Because if I just, if my opponent like turn one thought seizes or inquisitions me and I lose this, my hand is just literally dead. Sounds great. Uh, legitimately do not know what I'm supposed to put back. I think I'm going to send away a mentor. I uploaded this deck list and it defaults to uploading this planes for some reason. But I dislike it. Alright, super rewarded for mulliganing my hand. 
I assume my opponent needs to take the Sanctum Prelate here, but like both of these cards are the Nutter Butters as well. Uh, notice here that my opponent's mana is very much not free, right? Like, this is going to keep them off of playing Run and Six in the near future. So this play pattern seems to indicate that they have Force of Will in their deck still. Which is something that I was unsure whether or not was actually going to be the case. So my opponent is valuing taking this Palace Jailer off the table ASAP. That makes a lot of sense to me. So my opponent has just traded that Snapcaster Mage for four points of life. That's totally fine for me. I probably won't deploy another threat to the board out of fear of Pernicious Deed or Toxic Deluge. Um, not sure how much I love that play from my opponent. So they knew from the last thought sees that I had the source to plowshares, right? Okay, sure. What's the other side of this? Bounce a creature. So I have my opponent on a three turn clock to Crusader. Can choke their mana a little bit, but maybe not as much as I would like. And another discard spell? Ooh, I don't... I don't know if I like using that discard spell. So the difference between 9 and 7 is an entire turn of clock off of Mirren Crusader. Alright, um, so you need to have a red removal spell right now. I definitely think you should have floated mana. At least bluff something. All right, uh, we took that one down. Um, these sort of Strypho Pile decks are very difficult matchups. Um, I think my opponent made some errors, but we were pretty far ahead in this game. Like, they, they could only fight from the discard axis, and, like, we had a lot of gas in hand, and if any one of, like, Prelate or Jailer hit play, they were in a lot of trouble. All right. 
I'll be back tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed.